cauliflowers are one of the many rare crops that we grow in our garden that you probably won't find in your local grocery store. They're nutritious, easy to grow and propagate, and at least here in our garden they've had very few pest or disease problems. They're also perennial in zones 8 through 10, and possibly 7. But even if you live in a colder climate, you can still grow them easily as annuals. Like kale and collards, tree collards are a member of the Brassica genus. However, they're perennial in the right climate and grow to be about 10 feet tall. The tallest tree collard plant in this bed is over four and a half feet tall and it was only transplanted here this spring. To me, they taste like a cross between kale and traditional collards with maybe a hint of purple cabbage. Their history is not well documented, but they reportedly originated in Africa and were preserved and passed on in the U.S. by African Americans. These tree collards are purple when it's cold, but turn more green when the weather is warm. They usually don't go to seed, but when they do, the seeds may not breed true. So the best way to propagate them is through cuttings. According to Bountiful Gardens, collard leaves are rich in calcium, vitamins B1, B2, B9, and C, as well as beta carotene. They're high in soluble fiber and contain multiple nutrients with potent anti-cancer properties. Tree collards are easy to propagate from cuttings. When taking cuttings, you want to cut above the woody part that develops at the bottom of the plant, and you want each cutting to have several of these nodes. Nodes exist where leaves used to be, and each one can sprout roots when buried in soil or new leaves when above the soil. Because tree collards are not perennial here in Zone 5, we took cuttings from our plants last fall and overwintered them under grow lights in our grow room. A south-facing window would be even better. Each cutting was placed in a separate pot with roughly half of the nodes below the soil and half above. The potting soil was roughly 50% organic potting mix, 30% coconut core, and 20% worm castings. Using this approach, we have about a 75% success rate propagating tree collards. If you use gallon pots, you shouldn't have to up-pot the plants before spring. In early April, we planted nine tree collards in a 4x4 raised bed that was amended with compost and worm castings. Though growing tree collards as annuals is easy, I'd rather grow them as perennials. And because we've had luck in the past overwintering Georgia collards under protection, I'm hopeful we'll be able to do the same thing with tree collards. So this fall I plan to cut back the tree collards, leaving at least a few nodes above the woody section on each plant. I'll use these cuttings to start new plants indoors. I'll then heavily mulch the remaining plants with autumn leaves and add more protection as the weather cools. First, probably in early December, I'll add a cold frame over the bed. And then some weeks later, I'll add a hoop house over top of that. And as the weather warms in the spring, I'll first remove the hoop house and then later the cold frame. I don't know if this will keep the plants alive over the winter, but if it does, new branches will emerge from the nodes in the spring. We've been enjoying greens from these plants ever since this April. They tend to be less bitter when it's cool outside and more tender when they're small, but we enjoy them all summer long, even the big leaves. We often eat them raw in salads, usually mixed with some more tender greens like lettuce. We also like to use the leaves as wraps. For this dish, we steam the collard leaves and wrap them around guacamole, vegetarian bacon, diced Egyptian walking onions, corn, black beans, and diced tomatoes. We season them with a little salt, cayenne pepper, cumin, and chili powder, and top them off with salsa. But my all-time favorite collard greens recipe is Congolese collard greens, pictured here along with vegetarian barbecue and garlic mashed potatoes. We made this simple recipe with Georgia collards, tree collards, Egyptian walking onions, tomatoes, peanut butter, salt, and cayenne pepper. I've included a link to the recipe in the description. I hope you enjoyed this closer look at one of the rare crops we grow in our garden that you probably won't find in your local grocery store. The more of us who grow rare crops like tree collards, the better we'll collectively preserve the genetic biodiversity of our food supply. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <music>